Hi everyone, this is Tatiana Moreira, architect and interior designer here in Miami, bringing to you another Style House Talks. And on today's talk, the subject is about quality and elegance. It can be glamorous, architectural, eclectic, and it still stimulates lively debates among specialists. Today, we are talking about Italian design. And for that, I invited a team of amazing Italians, professionals. They're all together working the design trade for over 60 years. So I'm here. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Lucia Esquito, Jorge Giraldo, and Georgia Girardello. Welcome to Style House Talk. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Very nice. So let me introduce uh, our guests. So I have here uh, Lucia, that with her background in foreign languages, is ambassador for the high-end Italian design brands throughout North American architecture and design community. Retaining a vast experience in sales and marketing department of leading brands such as Bizaza, Dedar, Hermes Home, along with her practice in uh, the FLA Eventi, organizing design events and doing partnerships, makes her insighted and true point of reference in the design industry. Today, she is the director of Medallion. Lucia is an avid uh, tennis player, traveler, and art lover. He speaks three languages, and prior to coming to Miami in 1998, lived in, lived in Lecce, Milan, and Dusseldorf. Is that right, Lucia? Yes, that's right. <laughs> so welcome. Now I'm going to introduce to you Jorge. Jorge is an architect and holds a master's degree in interior design from the Institut Europeo in Rome. Lived in amazing cities such as Rome, New York, Toronto, Dallas, in Bogota, prior to coming to Miami for over 10 years ago. Been there, done that, and seen a lot during his 25 years in the design industry around the world, while on his own studio and working for leading brands such as Flexform, Paola Lenti, Luminaire, and Rocher Bobois. How he is passionate about life. His things are travel, cook, dine out, indulge himself in museums or art galleries. Welcome, Jorge. Thank you. Super Good excited. To be here. <laughs> <laughs> and my next guest, Georgia Girardelli, holds a degree in economics from Fa Foscari in Venice and became business developer, development leader in the hospitality, commercial, and residential design markets throughout the past 15 years. Multilingual and skilled sales professional with excellent knowledge of the product she represents, worked for the Glass and Tile Company Trend and for the Quartz and Terrace Producers Compact. Today, she embodies the Italian fashionable bath and kitchen furnishes giant, Jessie. For seven years, Miami is home, but she also lived and worked in Vicenza, Venice, Berlin, and Dallas. Georgia is an outdoors sports enthusiast and cool design projects hunter around the world. That's her words. That's correct. Welcome. I'm so <laughs> excited to have you here. Thank Since you. Since we decided to do um, the talk about Italian design, I've been like uh, super excited to be here today because it's such a, a, a subject we that I love. Everybody knows that I love it Italy. You're passionate about Italy. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> passionate about Italy, the design, the, the work, the food, everything. Masters in every fashionable industry that counts, the Italians seem to have it all. Art from Da Vinci, furniture from the masters, an impeccable sense of style that the rest of the world could only dream of conquering. Desired and incorporated into luxury homes in every corner of the globe, Italy's long line of design stars have established this passionate nation as a world-leading laboratory for new design ideas in setting a global high bar for interior excellence. But what is about the Italian culture that provokes such powerful creativity? Can you guys tell me? I think it's coming from 600 years of 
experience since the Renaissance, really, the seniors, the Medicis, and all the families in Florence start to develop and the ta- to develop the taste of beauty, elegance, art, and support the artist, the designer, the craftsmanship. It's very important in the Italian world. The craftsmanship really is the right mix and the right expressions to the beauty than today life is what we have as a, called as Italian design. That's that's what I I, I learned. Yeah, I think um, I've been traveling quite a bit, visiting factories, and something that I noticed, because in Italy, many of the factories are still family owned. Something that I've noticed is that there's a sense of pride in continuing the tradition and what the current generation has learned from the previous traditions. There's no not much interest in um, there is interest in innovating but there is also again the sense of pride of continuing what they've learned from the previous generations and they I I see that these artisans don't want to um, cut some of the process they really want to go through all the steps to make sure that the manufacturing is still intact and that the attention to detail is really at a different level that's what I learned right that traditional is there is the perfect model of being the traditional, but incorporating in the, the new without threatening the old, like yes. the original, the integrity of the original, right? Yes. So I understand you guys take a lot of pride mm-hmm. in, yes. in 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 how everything started, like in the Renaissance, so many years ago, in uh, 16th centuries, right? Uh, at, between the 11th, 16th. Uh, what I read actually when, while I was doing this here is that when the high quality press craftsmen got together to design and create luxury uh, furniture to furnish the homes of the fashionable upper class back in the days in yes. cities like uh, Venice, Milan, Florence, and Vicenza, yes. and that's how they all started producing. The culture started right there, and yes. people is still uh, stimulates that until today. Yeah, I think it's become um, something innate in us because being born there, it was not about the big. Um, process of creating beautiful things it's all about i think many little details but those details are very important to then create something that is beautiful um you know starting from i remember even my grandmother i come from a very simple family Mm -hmm. but uh we would never have lunch or dinner without a tablecloth everything had to be beautiful even if it was simple but those details were very important because it wasn't a proper meal unless you had the proper plate and the proper um, again it didn't have to be expensive or fancy but the attention to having certain um, the, this the tradition that uh-huh. was very innate in, uh, and, and I think we grew up with that and that's something that has become uh, part, part of, of us yes. uh, it, it wasn't and I only realized after I moved abroad uh, what a precious um, tradition, tradition we had tradition it is and, yeah. yeah because you don't see this outside and you assume that everybody else lives yeah. that way and um, it's not and it's not the case yeah, in a lot I of other places you, you have a good point I think you will realize after we leave Italy how much culture we bring inside because again we are like born and raised there we live architecture we brief culture mm-hmm. so for us it's really important uh, to to transfer express them everything from the kitchen to fashion to design and everywhere it's like a, a lifestyle it's a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle. It, that's what i see it's a lifestyle it's a designer italian design means uh, uh, i think it's like a a combination between unique design and an excellence in manufacturing because we are our attention on details because we are family businesses most of the time and small and medium as Lucia said therefore we try to achieve perfection with attention of details in material and finishes and then it is as family business there is more attention on the social responsibility to bring out in the world something special Mm -hmm. more than creating industrial product that bring us economic Mm -hmm. benefits so i think that is not only about the money no it's a lot more behind that yeah it's not about the money and that was exactly my my next question was what is so unique about the italian design and you answer is the high quality uh materials elaborate design techniques 
that produce elegant pieces. That's what I wrote. Every time I, I, yeah. I Google what is Italian design, the word, the words quality. It means quality, research, creativity. That's that's basically what I it's think saying. in Italy right now the beauty of Italy, the Italian design is precisely that right now we are living a moment and everything combined together, like the geniality of person like Gio Ponti, but also the craftsmanship, but also the entrepreneurs doing the real factory plus the social uh, interest to to yeah. develop the tradition and to keep the tradition. I think that mix is what is uh, putting the design Italy into the excellent to, level. To, to the excellent uh -huh. level. If I may add something, I think also Italians usually build things to last. Uh, it's not about a disposable design type, even though right now That's I think that the culture, say, yeah. the culture is such that we get tired after, you know, three years, five years of what we have and we want to change it. But Italian products are meant to last a lifetime. And that's because also, you know, we have buildings that are hundreds years old. Exactly. And, uh, so you're I, used to the thing that is not uh, just less a period and go. So you build to less. That's why most of your pieces are timeless. Are ti exactly. exactly. They're timeless. Your they're design. not flashy. They're yes. not in your face. They're But they're built to stand the, the That's uh, elegant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you build a piece that you can see pieces that are done so many years ago that until today, it's it's still good timeless. to have it. Timeless. Yeah. Exactly. Timeless. That's how the word is that. And what made in Italy represents? Because everybody, when we buy something, if you go say, oh, made in Italy, can be a garment, a, a, a piece of furniture, or anything. What made in Italy represents? It's all this all together, right? Is Beauty, that, design, lifestyle, experience, tradition. Yes. I think um, when it comes to fashion, for example, which I think translate also into the furniture design, Absolutely. especially. Um, if you have a suit that it's tailor-made, you see that it's really made to your specification, to your body size, to your um, uh, complexion. Um, and, and I think that really translates into the furniture pieces. Exactly. So you there's design a, for one's being, for a the lot ones of a, use. Yes, there's a lot of attention to custom design. So a lot of the Italian manufacturers, they propose collections but everything can be customized yeah. and and it will take time to customize a piece to your own specifications but that again part of the pride of saying I've made this for you so it becomes Customated. your own piece and yes the the shape can be similar to a lot of other pieces of furniture but again the choice of the finishes and the material makes it uniquely yours and that I think also makes the Italian manufacturers even happier to do that, to just that. to show that they can do that and they can put something of their own creation into your own home. I think Italian manufacturing company also are looking for customization. I mean, they love when like, uh, yeah. To create like something the, new and they, customize and part of the... They have the designer that ask for something different because it's our specialty. I mean, we, uh, um, we love uh, uh, custom product and then we also are lucky enough to have like uh, this variety of material and finishes that we are able to create that uh, you know of course allow us like to achieve a top level of customization that usually other markets are not able to do. Yeah, I think the, it always starts with the, having good materials, right? Exactly. Not only in, in, the, the, in the manufacturing world, like when we do a garment or furniture, but when we talk about food, talk about Italian exactly. food. The, the Italian food is so amazing because the material is already so good, but it's still, I see the principles are the same. It's The food is still very simple. Mm -hmm. It's not super elaborate. It's the same, you eat the same bolognese forever. <laughs> it's a timeless. Dish. But coming back to design, I think what defines Italian design really is what is the geniality and the ability to express the moment, the time. So you see in the 60s how Joe Colombo um, really expresses the decade for the world. And then in the 80s, the Memphis movement, and in the 50s, Gio Ponti. And it's the ability to express the world, really, the dynamic of the yeah. world, the the vibe of the floor, the speed of the, and the geniality with the craftsmanship. I yes. think that's yeah. Yeah. Vital, vital. I think another, another good point for uh, Italian design is like uh, that uh, each region 
bring uh, tradition, bring culture, bring a different type of design or specialty. So if you think about as instructor, I mean, uh, for example, we have like Emilia Romagna that is more specific of ceramic tiles, uh, Florence and Tuscany for textile. So each region has its own specialty, it's let's call it Piedmont, like that. Piedmont has like more bathroom accessories and fittings, and that allows like to create within the industry I mean, a network and I'll raise the bar of like the quality level and also we're able to brand overseas our culture, our design. I mean, every designer architect knows that in Italy, each region is specialized exactly. you know, in his own product and style. I and love that. it. I had a chance to go, to, well, I've been in Italy a couple of times uh, for for work proper purpose, right? For the fair and also being uh, visiting some manufacturers in some different regions. We actually, I went to with you to Lecce, right? To Puglia. To, to yeah. Puglia. And we went to visit a couple of companies. Such a great uh, experience. And to see exactly what you guys talking about. They, they, most of them are small family businesses, yeah. right? And they take so much pride in delivering and doing customize and showing and showing us the entire process how they outsource their 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 products and yes. using local resources too exactly. and materials that are available Lo local resources <coughs> and and that's precisely what you do right Lucia yeah. you're working to Medallion and what yeah. talks uh, to us a little bit uh, yeah, so what is the connection right so Medellin is the international community of architects designers <coughs> sorry um, uh, developers and brand members. So our our mission is to connect um, all the designers and architects, especially those that work in the high end um, field, uh, to Italian manufacturers. Especially, we're not only doing that with Italian manufacturers, but um, let's say the majority of them are Italian because oh, okay. also our connections are there, and mm -hmm. uh, and because we know personally. Uh, the owners of the companies, we know how they work, how their uh, vision for uh, how their culture, the company culture is. And, and uh, all type of company, right? Because I remember I being to, to, I love and I remember yeah. very well the, the marble yes. manufacturing. It's so pretty to see them. They are carving the piece yes. of block. It's, it's, yes. we can't. Yeah, I know it's all, it's accessories, it's uh, kitchen and bathroom products. Uh, it's more architectural products like windows and doors, and it's really a variety. So it's, it, the mission is really to um, make sure that um, architects and designers and developers really know and appreciate the beauty of this of these companies it's not just based on money or on the project or you know just using some of the brand names to promote themselves but to really appreciate what this brand brings and, and to I the project and i think that's what you guys doing because getting out of that trip you come here so inspired you want to you be able to use every single company that you went to because it's so passionate about it to see the the leather the smell of the leather in, in doing the sofas yeah, yeah. and the things oh i remember very well and i love it and you're now working with bathrooms uh and kitchen tell us a, a little bit of what you learn about this uh this industry what do you deliver because it's it's beautiful the pieces from so um, yeah, now I work like a, as a business developer manager for Jesse, and Jesse is the private wellness company. Is uh, uh, of course uh, uh, Italian, and is a family business that, that for over thirty years has focused his intent like uh, to deliver like a lifestyle, a lifestyle uh, where basically we produce uh, bathroom fittings and accessories, uh, luxury bathroom and fittings accessory to make sure that we can. Uh, um, have like uh, express uh, the same or have the same feeling that we feel like in the public spaces like spa also mm -hmm. hot home. It's a wellness company. A wellness right? company. Pre uh, uh, present it is exactly a wellness company. And yes. it, where is located in Italy? It is located like in Serra Valesesia, uh -huh. in Vercelli, so in is the Piedmont area. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we have also a beautiful uh, headquarter uh, in uh, in the fashion district uh, in uh, in Milan. In Milan, yeah. Where course. you are, you are uh, all welcome. <laughs> yes, beautiful stores, beautiful headquarters. Yes. Who knows the yeah. products? It's it's amazing. Yes. And Jorge, you, he works with one of my, the best companies that I love flex form and Paola Lenti out uh, the, furn the furniture. How are you loving it? What can you tell about the culture of that company? 
the beauty of these two companies is that I'm really in the heart of the Italian design, in my opinion. So the DNA of true. both companies uh, is true. just being Italian, I mean, in both directions. The craftsmanship of both are fantastic, is the focus, the quality, the timeless factor. Mm -hmm. And of course, the geniality of Paola Lenti and Antonio Citerio is just, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, non-parallel in this Italian design. Mm, somehow I get it into Made in Meda, means, uh, which is kind of the brand really that um, is supported right now, which is Made in Meda. Made in Meda is not only Milan, but Meda, the craftsmanship of Meda, and both are in Meda. So wow. I'm very proud to be part of that because it's really the pike of the design today and the production mm -hmm. as well. That's true. Yeah. And, uh, and we have all these amazing companies here in Miami. So how has been the, the, the experience of the, the Italian design here, uh, the, the acceptance of those brands? But Italian design, it's, it's number one everywhere in the world. But we are here in Miami, and you're connecting your, yes. uh, the, those companies uh, completely in North America, but you're based here in Miami. Tell me a, a little bit more, so many of those beautiful companies here. Yes, so I think Italian design has always been aspirational for a lot of people. I think that for a while, when I first moved to Miami, um, a lot of the homes and apartments were second homes. And so initially, I think that the investment in the furniture was not as big as it used to be. As, as it is now, oh, that's true. Now. Because it's so now, a lot more people have made this their primary home, and there's a lot more people who travel straight from Miami to Europe, to Italy, and they started really appreciating and seeing this different kind of design. And there's a more openness to invest and to have beautiful pieces of furniture because again Italian yeah, because design the, and the, Italian the, furniture is an investment it's, it it's is. not the, the, it's, it's not about the price but you buy, buying uh, uh, like I said a furniture piece of uh, an item that is timeless yes which is and it. the presence of a lot of these design showrooms that also helped with that because initially I know a lot of designers from here would just travel to New York and go to the so um, the D&D building and spend the week there with the clients and do all the purchasing because there. The, because there because was not, the stores there was not locally, as much yes. here. There were just a couple and, um, you know, I have to say Luminaire has been one of the uh, ambassadors. Ambassador, uh, that's true. And thanks to them, a lot more companies have had the exposure in Miami and then eventually decided to open their own headquarters. And I think that that Nowadays, is really brought... Most of the big uh, brands that, air, have, uh, that have their showroom here, right? Yes, yeah. because I think that the potential... Uh, mm -hmm. And Miami is a very particular place because it's really the gateway to South America. Um, the, thanks to uh, all the influx of uh, <laughs> Californians and New Yorkers. In New Yorkers and now in the past three years, yeah. let's say, two, three yes. years, yes. Um, after the pandemic, during the pandemic, you know, all the people that moved to Miami and made it their primary home, or at least one of the main residences, has also uh, contributed to this. And also the, the power of the money, it's bigger now. So uh, uh, consequently, the bigger houses and they want to furnish all the luxury more luxury. That are, yes. that are branded. You know, you have the ones from uh, furnished by BMB oh. Italia, and then the so there's there's a lot of and Italian architects that yeah. you know we have Renzo Piano, we have even Lissoni, we have between the architecture itself and the interior design curated <coughs> by Italians. We did a, the, the the talk previous to that was yeah. about that the real estate with the brand names, yes. right? All those new buildings with the brand names, like you said, BB Italia. We have Baccarat, uh, and you name it, Aston Martin, yes. right? So all the buildings Armani. they are ready, Armani. Yeah. All those buildings they are ready bring uh, a, 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 a guarantee excellence. Right. with the name with beautiful uh, amazing architects like you said uh doing those buildings so of course nonetheless you respect that the furnishings the the, the finishes the interior yeah. be in the same high quality and that's where the italian furniture comes because mm -hmm. it is it is italian furniture it is considered the best in the world synonymous of yes quality, quality and the best in the yeah. world right and uh um you're saying um here 
in Miami, Luminaire was one of the the ambassadors, and that's how I met you, right? Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, yeah. Luminaire, he's been you've been you were in Luminaire years. ten years for yeah. so long, and, <laughs> and I loved working with Hawi, and I still love <laughs> working with Hawi <laughs> because. You. He of uh, his knowledge of all the pieces and the passion and explaining and that's what I think it's um, it's my company has been ten years the office and the importance of him knowing you guys who knows represent those brands and have the the obligation almost of educating as designers and the public. From the beginning, of course, I've been exposure now after 10 years, exposure to the Italian uh, culture and design for uh, many, many years because I every year I go to, to the fair, to the Milone, which we should talk a little bit about. And But um, the, you're saying that now uh, there's more power in people buying the Italian furniture, but also because people it's being educated, uh, more exposed to this to this old world now, right? Yeah. Phil Luminaire was fantastic, and I think they got the, the Casamali, they, they brought the Italian design, and they won the Compasso de Oro. And I think it's oh, very, wow. uh, it's fair that they have the Compasso de Oro, but right now the respect for the DNA of his company, of the Italian design, that's because I, we did this move. I did the move to be to respect the DNA of both brands, and they are to me the most Italian of the Italians. I'm talking about furniture, and that respect bring the whole universe of each one of the company because they are artists. Yes. Paula Lent is an artist, and the craftsmanship behind and the textile vision and the color vision is unique in the world, as well as flex form. So I think the respect for uh, the DNA, the philosophy is very important here. And that's because I'm in there really because, yeah. And I, 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 I actually think, and I'm very thankful that the Italians take the time to explain you all that. Yes. Mm. All the, the value behind just the piece, right? The, the, all this tradition that we're talking about, how it's done, what they put in the many hours, the craftsmanship, the, the, it's artwork, which I think it lacks a little bit in the American culture when it comes, right? Yeah. It's more about the profits and the quantities, and um, there's, you know, uh, I think a different, uh, different priorities. Different pri different market, a different clientele. Yes. The client, the client. Different philosophy just... too. Yes. It's a different lifestyle, different philosophy. No bad, nothing wrong, but no, it's, it's just different. It's, it's not different. exactly. Different. But if if you're the person who's gonna buy that furniture because you want the best price, you're gonna come to and go yeah. there, buy and leave. It's not the client for the, the furniture yeah. for the Italian for design. Us, for us, it's important to to tell our client the history behind uh, the production of a specific product, uh, the heritage that we bring along. I mean, yes. all the study, the yes. research of the material, the texture, the, you know, the, the will uh, to, to really uh, find perfection in what we do and create a custom product that satisfies the needs of you because mm -hmm. it's a luxury product at the it, end. Yes. And if is. you want luxury, you raise the bar of the the material, the design, and everything. That was, is, uh, I think, what is about Italian design. Mm -hmm. So we want to create uh, like the special experience, the unique experience, uh, as Lucia be be before said, uh, in order to create a, a tailored product for you. Mm -hmm. And I not something that you can find everywhere. Exactly, it's a tailored product. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, oh, yeah. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's your delivery. And um, talking about, uh, the Italian design coming to Miami, and of course, one of the the, the ways uh, to put the Italian uh, uh, work out there is is the fairs, right, around the world. And we the biggest fair in the world for for furnishing Italian design itself is the Milan, the Salone, the so Mobile, which happens every year in April. Last year was not April, but it's mainly being April. What is the importance? And nowadays, I've been going to the fair for 10 years. I I think I always have skills to go to Italy. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I've been there for many, many times. And uh, every year, it's more and more people going to the fair. Back in the day, it was mainly trade, mainly architects and designers and, and manufacturers. They, nowadays, there's a lot of, of, of 
Be, even the fashion uh, company, yeah. the, the so I think that everybody realized that um, the potential clients for that lifestyle, just because it's not about the product only, but it is the lifestyle. The lifestyle includes fashion, includes everything else around it, accessories, and so the whole city is activated. I think yes. it's a word that everybody's using right now, but <laughs> it is true that. Uh, Salone is not just about the fair. The fair is amazing, is gigantic, and it's nothing like any other fairs you can think of. Uh, but it's That's also true. because uh, it's not just about the products that are shown at the fair itself. And even the boots, I mean, to see how these companies really um, prepare use the space year, and the investment that they investment. make in those spaces where you really walk into these areas and you feel like you're in a different, like you're in a, a different apartment or you're, you know, you've traveled. Uh, yeah, from one room to the other. To the next, it's yes. completely different. Yeah. And, uh, but the rest, I mean, there's over a thousand events mm -hmm. throughout the city during that time. and. You know, it's you one week, through, right? It's one week. The, the entire city is the most uh, busiest week of the year in Milan. Up until, it's amazing. Yeah, up until right yes. before the pandemic, there were over 400,000 people going to Milan for the fair. Yeah. And Milan is a city of maybe 2 million, maybe uh -huh. 3 million. It's so to have 400,000 people going to visit, it's like an enormous it amount of people. I know, it's wow. events everywhere, uh, every day. It's impossible to attend it all, but yeah. if yeah. you expose It's about there, art, again, it's about lifestyle that goes beyond just the one piece of furniture. It's, yes. um, and you did work with the company who... who I, yes, so Federico was the, who does the, the owner the, of Salone. So for many years, I, I was working directly with the fair and I was curating the visits of um, North American designers and architects coming to, especially those coming for the first time because it can be overwhelming for those that are coming for the first time because there's so much to see, so much to do um, that if so you, you help don't, the person if you them, don't so. arrive prepared, then you just get you, you know, uh, lost. Take and it. you miss it, right? Yes. A lot of things that there are there that you can use. We've seen each other a couple of times, yes. in Milan, right? Yeah. The fair, and uh, it's amazing, like you said, it's a lifestyle. They deliver art, and they they in well, last year was both Eurocutina and yes, because and of Eurocutina. we skipped a year because of right. COVID, yes. right? But one year it's the so this coming year is going to be Euroluce. Euroluce, there's a few kitchen companies that will also exhibit but uh, or bathroom we're, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be there. yeah so one year is, uh, is the salone with euro cucina one year with euro and there you go but let's year and there are fair out. in venice which is yes. kind of parallel and, and yet fantastic by, to yes, complement the, the beauty yeah. of milan is the fingerprint and the fair has print really yeah. in the city because walking in milan you see the anonymous building and the anonymous design through the whole 60 years of design, and it's fantastic seeing yes, it, discovering Milan yeah. in that way. Last year, I had the opportunity to spend most of my year in Milan. So it was I, every year when I would go to the fair, I arrive uh, two, three days before, uh, which I already have events, right? Yes. Usually it starts on Tuesday, and I usually get there like on Saturday, and then you start having events. But this year, <laughs> I was there the whole month before, and it was very interesting to see because while I was visiting some of the local stores and, and the brand names, and when I walk in, the showroom was, they were, was there, but they were like, oh, uh, no, we have the new pieces, but we cannot show you now. We, we cannot show you now, no, yeah. because everything is launched. The big reveal. The big reveal, and you have to see the, how careful they were to hide all the information because, of course, I was taking advantage that I was there. They were taking me to the manufacturers, yeah. and there was the new line, and they were like, please, no picture, Tatiana, because we're going to be revealing <laughs> this. Don't post yeah. it. I had one of the companies that I had to promise, sign. <laughs> I'll take a picture, but you can trust me. I won't post it a thing, and I did. He, he actually sent yeah. me a message after, thank you so much. You're the best. <laughs> 
brava. Yeah, it's brava. Yeah. And uh, it's like to see all that we talked about, the passion that they put there. From the moment the, 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 the fair finished, they are already starting for the, the next, next show. For, yes. for the next show. So it's, it's one year of preparation, investment and things. And you only see beauty everywhere, in stores. And of course, I made, um, I'm talking a lot about this because I'm so excited about uh, being there. And I made some local friends, Italians mm -hmm. who live there. And you have to see uh, some of them who, who work in the trade or not even necessarily with furniture, but uh, they go like, no, we prepare. They, they are like a spa or something else. And now we prepare for the Milan, uh, for the Saloni yeah. because everyone's here and they all excited in all the events. And even themselves, the locals, they prepare and they want to be part of it. They want to go to the fair and see. Like you said, it's not only about the trade anymore. Yeah, I think that also design is a little more democratic, so to speak, than, for example, fashion. Because Milan is very famous for the for fashion. The fashion, yeah, it's the the fashion is a very closed the world. industry. They it's don't a, let you, right? They don't let you in. And instead, design is very open. And design is part of everybody's life. Actually, fashion can be... The Saloni has two days, all right? The last two days is open to the public. To the public, yes. Yeah, in fashion, you can't. If you're not invited, <laughs> you're not going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was very, I think, was one of the years with more people this yeah. year, right? Yeah. Because maybe of the COVID made, yes. made it go. It, it, yeah. it's, they, were a, they were a high expectation, obviously, because of so many years of COVID. The yeah. COVID. Yeah. And the Saloni Mobile, I think, is like the mecca of creativity. It's like a perfect networking between the designer of all around the world and the yeah, manufacturing right. companies yeah. of Italy. And it's like the space where really they can brainstorm in and work together and think about the future. Yeah. And that's one thing I want to ask. Every year I ask this, how you guys do it? How is that? Because we hide everyone like you die and you tell, don't say anything about it. But once the, the, the salon, the doors open, you start going to the, to the, to the, 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 the fair in the stores. They, they have, um, I don't want to say the same, but it's, everything is so similar. I think they, they meet together. Listen, this year we're going to launch this, this. How is this about the design, the creativity behind? Because um, everything is different. But all the companies, they are aligned, and I think they present this, the same kind of things. How does that work? Do you no. understand my question? No, no. <laughs> I think I didn't explain well. So basically, um, I understand um, every company has its own identity and design, but every year they launch pretty much very similar items. Mm -hmm. You mean the trends uh, the tra of like yes. uh, the ah, okay. It's the vibe of the moment. Yes, I, mean, I really remember maybe I don't know yeah. um, how many years ago, maybe ten years when we start using a lot of the of the tiles, the ceramic tiles that looks like wood. Mm -hmm. It was not right. something big because of course, like uh, going to to the fairs, it's not only the finishes. You you see the whole. The, the, the whole, it's a big, the, the whole finishes. Production. Yeah. Production. Uh, the, the booths are like a, a, a artwork itself. Even if you don't put anything there, they are so beautiful. And I remember once that I, uh, that, uh, that year in the fair, all the showrooms, they had the, the tiles that look like wood in the floor. Mm -hmm. And I actually remember coming <coughs> to the office and looking for my pictures from the previous years <laughs> yeah, to compare. Because it was not, you know, it was different tiles, carpet, whatever. And I'm like, okay, and it is it stuck in my mind because at my next project, I said, I'm putting the, the, yeah, the, the, the tile. tile. And my client didn't want because at the time, everybody only would use like marble, big tiles, white, uh, kahara, whatever it was um, in the floors. And uh, I had to put in my own house mm. first. So I made a decision. I'm using it myself. My, I was buying my house in, 10 years ago, and uh, I put it in my own house. And after that, when I took the pictures, all my clients wanted it. Yeah. So you see how it stays? Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that in the salon, and I wanted in And every it's time we go to the fair, we bring the trends and, and show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But going back to my question, is like how it's, the trend goes exactly the same for everyone. 
Well, like I Jorge was saying, saying, I don't that. think that the, um, mm. it's more about the trend and yeah. living uh, or uh, translating the mood of the times and mm. what people are using their homes for. Um, you know, seeing, let's say, in the last few years, because a lot of people have been working from home, there's a lot of attention to how can we make the home office, like the home office concept didn't exist 10 years ago. It was very, very limited. Yes, And true. now it's become, so I think the focus has been also from the, the companies, but even I feel that there's a very talented product designers that sometimes collaborate with a few different companies and uh -huh. maybe also mm -hmm. their style is translated through that. I don't want to say that they copy each other or they do the same exactly. thing because it's not. It's not. A big parenthesis is it's not, but it's the it's the, the um, how should I say it's the DNA of that design mm. that's it's translated into that. And a big parenthesis is really the momentum, the historical political momentum of the world, the it's the expression of the time, yeah. the achievement, technological achievements, the um, political situation, yeah, if something is happening, influences. as well as everything is the vibe of the moment, is yeah. the speed of the moment. It yeah. depends on like, yeah, it's very linked, like it contextualizes what the moment that we are living and like after COVID, we were like, a, very focused on wellness and well-being <coughs> sorry that's the, true. the attention also yeah. to bring uh, biophilia uh, biophilia sorry the sustainability the attention to bring nature inside our home to feel better mm -hmm. the sustainability has been like a you know a topic that is yes. been long it's gonna itself. keep going uh, yes. for what we're living now the global yeah. warming uh, the sorry the war global warming the global warming and then our uh, social uh, I mean, our commitment to sustainability is like our social responsibility. So there are topic that uh, goes uh, beyond design. Is like uh, they are like uh, in every type this of. This is uh, more and more incorporated in manufacturers today, right? Yeah. The manufacturers yeah. having that in mind, the global warming, the sustainability yeah. uh, of their products in bringing home. And even the specific innovations, like you're saying, you know, nobody even came up with the idea of making tiles that look like wood, but the technology wasn't there. Yeah. So once the technology was invented, then a lot of different manufacturers and different designers decided, oh, I can use this. So somebody decided to make it with long planks or smaller planks or different yeah. finish, different colors, but that technology before was not really available. Mm, and, exactly. and the result was not as beautiful as Italians wanted it In to be. That. And so um, I think that that created then the final the training, product that's what it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like in the 60s when chroma arrived in the industry, yeah. the Corbusier designed everything in with color, chrome. not in yeah. chrome, not in yeah, chrome not in, in the chrome, 20s. Yeah. And in the 60s, the foundation, they asked the, the, the Corbusier Foundation and they accepted the chrome. And we know that those share the LC collection yes. is, is in chrome, well, but it, it was not designed in chrome. So it was the achievement of the moment and it was the speed of the moment. Exactly. It was the pop, the pop era so it's really a combination it's really the eras yeah. is the vibe of the moment it is a combination between uh, industry fashion design the technology. moment uh, the technology the moment that we are living mm. we, we all contaminate each other it's like uh, we all take inspiration from each other right, I think. exactly mm. even though it's not like you you sit there and gather and share let's do this it's it's a continuous thing right yeah, yeah. and that's another thing that yeah, the italian culture and the design it's a continuous thing that every every year it uh, grows more and more. In just going back to the tile that what before wasn't there nowadays, right? It's very few people want to unfortunately use the real uh, material, uh, natural natural material. For example, let's take this table. Right. This is it looks like a marble, but it's not. Not. Yeah, and because it's so perfect, right? But it's a, it's a high end product. And that is made in nowadays, even when we're doing pro uh, uh, projects, we educate the clients. And when they, nobody wants to work, nobody wants things that's going to give up more work because the, nat the, nat the natural product, you have to have more maintenance, be mm -hmm. more careful. So there's the design industry working for our well-being yeah. to facilitate our lives, right? To make it better and beautiful and, and, and better. Yeah. Correct. Not to mention that Meda is tiny, it's a village. Not to mention that all those factories, they are in a yes. very small village. Italy itself yeah. is not exactly. that big. Not so. to mention yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yes. It, like you said, the specialty goes for, by region by region. So they're yeah. all talking about yeah. 
and they come together and present what they did in Milan. Yes. Right? And sometimes the aesthetic is similar because again, the, the sense of beauty starts from that region and the mm -hmm. tradition and what people, so I, I find that there's um, the similarity, but not because things are the same, but because their sense of aesthetic and beauty is, it starts from the same place. That's true. Yeah. Um, the most famous Italian ever out there, it was Leonardo da Vinci. Right, we all know this. I did. Uh, I already knew that, but I did yeah. question. I did uh, that, and he was like a painter, an architect, inventor, writer. Ever, you name it. Another very famous uh, Italian. It's Dante Alighieri, right? Yeah, who who created the La Divina yeah, Commedia? Right. Exactly. And nowadays, which are some of uh, well-known Italian architects and designers that been working in bringing this design here today? that you, you work with in your companies? But I can name a few I want yeah. you to. To me, number one today alive, For with a lot of respect, it. is Renzo Piano. Renzo Piano. As an architect. As an architect. To me, as an architect. Renzo Piano to me, is the number one. Yes. Alive. Alive. Actually. alive. Yes. 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 Talking about that. And then actually, we are lucky enough to have like a building here on the 87. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the um, 87 the, the, the Surfside. Uh, yes. Surfside. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the park. What is the name of the building? 87 Park. Yeah. Uh, 87, 87 Park. 87 Park. It's a beautiful building. Yes. Been yeah. Yes. So uh, Renzo Piano is like the guru, I think, uh, still alive. That's true. Yes. All like. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Love his love. work. And as for as designer, more they all do collaborations of those big brands, right? right. I mean, I mean, you you have the usual suspect yeah. you know, between Piero Lissoni <laughs> so and Cittero. And you have exactly. the Monopoly. And Patrizia Urchiola. Yeah. But, but, but Patrizia Urchiola. But she's not Italian. Not Italian. No, but she's like, like, like uh, yeah. yes. Italian by choice. Yes, yeah, she's Italian, Italian by choice. By choice. Yeah. That's like, true. Like me. Yes. <laughs> like you. Yes, exactly. I, I, I'm Brazilian, but my heart, yeah. half of yeah. my heart, it's yeah. Italian. Yes. And um, uh, I went to, to, to uh, let me say, Le Como. Mm -hmm. the 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 hotel that she did yeah uh, Sereno. the Sereno amazing ah, mate. oh my god just we have that. to acknowledge in my opinion Gioponti and yes. Castiglioni. Yeah, yeah. Castiglioni. Castiglioni yeah. Gioponti. We have to acknowledge them yeah. as the masters yeah. of the masters. It, it, the masters. Yes. That's back in the days how yeah. I started. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I did a list of the, I didn't print, but I did a list of the of the yeah. masters, the Italian designers. Gioponti comes first, mm -hmm. and Castiglioni uh, also is there. Yes. But most of the names, nowadays, today, yes, I, I, I know she's not uh, Italian because, of course, her name came several yeah. times, Patrice Occhio. Yeah, but exactly, but Lissoni, uh, Citerio, mm -hmm. and these are the ones that are alive and putting great designs out there yeah. for if, uh, companies like Motaini, Cassina, Bibi yeah. Italia, Flexform, yeah. Yeah. right? Oh. And you also have, you know, the Palomba Serafini, for example, you have Paolo Navone, you have Carlo Colombo. Uh, Carlo Colombo. Um, even Fabio Novembre yeah. with his own craziness, you know, there's, there's different yeah. um, um, names. Yeah, and I think the reinvention of the which the Italians are very good reinventing themselves and the era, the yeah. new era is coming and the globalization. I think yeah. a new era is coming in design, and I think we are in a, a in a momentum that, that taking a new direction, and probably we will see it in the next Salone or mm -hmm. the next a couple of years the new new designer because all the companies they are having new names, yes. the globalization they are bringing even outside designers outside Italy yes. to Italy to design. Yeah. So that's yeah. going to be yeah. very interesting, which yeah. it happened in the past and in a very, yeah. uh, the Italians, because we learn free in Italy and we just mold our personality and design, but we bring something. Yeah. And true. I think also in terms of architecture itself, I mean, you have, you know, Stefano Boeri, you have Marco Piva, you have these big names, but I, I find that um, Italian architects are not as well known, but also there's not as many, but because I find that in Italy, um, we already have so many buildings and the main structure is already there. So there's been a better opportunity for interior architects and people like uh, um, Lissoni, like Citerio, who have also focused on the product itself and product uh, design, product design. And mm -hmm. industrial design. 
Um, so I think that they've become more prominent and more popular because they've had better opportunities in that sense. And instead, the actual architecture sometimes is more famous of people coming <clears throat> from other parts of the world where they have more opportunities to build actual buildings and design and that's and true do actually yeah i think it's more common in america for american designers to collaborate with a manufacturing company mm. than this italian designer Italian designer i mean and correct me if i'm wrong is like more focused on like the design design you know while pure design while the american designer like uh, there is i think much more a trend to collaborate with italian manufacturing company in order to achieve like uh, that um you know the balance but also between the creativity uh -huh. coming from here and then excellence in manufacturing yeah. typical from Ita italy that's why the salone mobile is like uh, the perfect place uh, to to um Merge. Uh, to merge, to merge yeah. the two uh, expertise, the two talents. And what is next to the Saloni? We are in February. Very soon, we're gonna have the fair. Yes. So the fair starts on the. No insider information. No. It cannot All the companies are running. So what I always find it, it's like a little miracle because until the day before Salone, exactly. all the companies are running and rushing and trying to get everything done. Oh, and there's all the little that's details. That's so true. <laughs> oh my and god. Think, oh my god. This will never happen. No, no, and anyway. then sure enough, the day that the, the fair starts, the yeah, the curtains go <laughs> and, and, and everything is beautiful and perfect probably and the planet the sustainability is going to yes. be a focus this yeah. year as well as last year was mm -hmm. i think yes wellness and i don't i don't I, we always so surprised when we go there because there is nothing else to 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 invent. Oh my God! What comes next? And so they always surprise us. Always yeah. beautiful. The Italians things. are. Yes. That they can the only bring thing um, that I would like to mention, because I think it, it should be a call for action at some point from maybe the authorities, is the fact that I've heard from some of the Italian manufacturers the fact that sometimes the new generation is not as interested in continuing this tradition in Italy. Um, so during COVID, a lot of the smaller manufacturers, the smaller um, um, suppliers of uh, materials, of finishes, supply, you know, chain. The supply chain has really struggled and suffered. Mm. And so going forward, mm. I know that some of the major manufacturers had to come up with, you know, different, like the plan B situation, but especially because also in Italy, has been challenging to find new blood that wants to continue this tradition. To continue. So mm. it would be nice to find and to support and Even foster for the material. And trade. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. like the production of the smaller components and you know what goes into the the, the, the CEO, the floor CEO, mm -hmm. did kind of um, article which was a little sad, not very promising, and saying that the Italian design precisely needs to reinvent itself, yeah. and it will happen. Yes. That's going to be the beauty and a new wave of, because there is a lot of challenges, the yes. COVID, of course, the yeah. chain supply, the yeah. technology in the world, really, the, right now, the new the war with Ukraine and Russia, the new yes. dynamic is not going to be easy for yeah. Yeah. For, 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 the, for the yeah. design. And going back to what I say, once in a while we see the news, right? Italian cities who are paying for people to come to and come move and there. yes, uh, move there. Yeah. So exactly, oh, yes. that's uh, one of the reasons you're saying along people, those lines. Well, yeah. of course, with globalization, everyone wants the same thing. That w I'm not in Brazil. I'm here. I went somewhere. Everybody was going somewhere, and, and, yeah. and it's hard to the succession. Right, yeah. to keep going the traditional and working from home. Yeah. Yes, this but also working to produce beautiful pieces that are not just about function or technology. I mean, that I think is very important and I think it should be incorporated even more, more in more. the design because sometimes I, I hear the, um, let's say a little bit of a criticism of Italian design is that more about aesthetic and beauty than it is about the function. Okay. Because for Italians, again, we were born with beauty, beauty. around us. I'm and sorry, I think I'm Italian. <laughs> I don't know about beauty. If it's not pretty, get out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because we do need beauty. Yes. Um, but I beauty. find that you know an important component would also be to incorporate it, yeah. not to eliminate the beauty, but it should be. It's what I say, actually. My slogan is beauty with a purpose, yes. right? It's, yeah. it's, yes. it's what I say all the time, beauty with a purpose. 
But, oh, of course, uh, but I do think there are some pieces that is only about beauty. Yes. That makes the, the design, it's, it's, a, it's a, a unique piece, but most of the pieces are with function, functionality, yes. thinking about sustainability more and more. Like you said, it needs to be incorporated, but not forget the no. traditional and the beauty. I think there is a name that we haven't named it here, which is Carlo Scarpa, uh -huh. which I fin find yeah. him the most refined designer or genius yeah. or architect um, yeah. in, in Italy in the last That's true. 60 oh, years. Wow, there's so, so many names. That it's so many should. names. So yes. um, yeah. that, those genius is the one that changed yeah. the light of Italian design. They, it, they happen suddenly yes. and yeah. they change the Italian design. Yeah. And that's, we are waiting for that. <laughs> well, um, thank you actually. It's been very <laughs> enlightening in the conversation and, and, and now is to know what is out there, what is next, what is the next trend. I'm sure we're gonna see at the Salone, but um, I think we should do a talk like this every six, uh, eight, six, eight months or once a year so yeah, we fun. can renovate. Uh, um, uh, to know what is out there. It's anything else you guys would like to complement in this conversation about the Italian design? It was lovely being here. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning I was a little bit nervous. Oh my God, it, you know, but it's, it's, it's about, it's a conversation. It's learning and um, nothing better to learn from about Italian design with you guys who be in the trade and born from there. And just one thing, Lucia, you said you're going to, when are we doing the next travel to Italy? So for the, the next will be for, yeah, that's, uh, we're working on that. So yeah, exactly. Stay tuned. Because uh, during um, COVID, I'm sure everybody lost a lot of travels, a lot of things. Oh, yes. yeah, that, that, that was. I had two trips planned to go to, to Italy. To one of them was to visit more manufacturers because the yeah. more you see, the more you learn. Yeah. Right. So the more we talked about, the more we yes. learn to hear experiences, to, to knowing that's how we learn. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm going to Vicenza in June. <laughs> she's from yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> we are, we're she's gonna talk. share with some. <laughs> some, ah, some going to I'm gonna go first to Flexform and Polaland, okay. and then I'm gonna have a nice. Where's Flexform? Uh, Meda, uh, Meda, Meda, Meda. Meda. Okay. Meda. Okay. In Polaland front of yeah, too? Meda as well. Oh, okay. It's a little village, but I'm gonna escape yeah. an hour. Yeah. 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 yeah, an hour yeah. kind of yeah. to Vicenza and stay yeah. there. Vicenza is beautiful. I've been there a couple beautiful. of times. It's a small city. Uh, it's a great friend from there. And the idea is the Prosecco area. Yeah. Is, uh, yes, oh, UNESCO yeah. Palladio site. And so and all the and Palladio just go for the with Prosecco. Prosecco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did one of this, the wine tour. I went to the Prosecco region to try all the Prosecco. It's actually my yeah. favorite because it's so light and so easy to drink. Yeah. And uh, I've been I'm to busy. Puglia, where she's from. For Leche, it's mm -hmm. a yes, beautiful little town. The is and, divine. Yeah. Yes. And actually everywhere in Italy you can go, it's beautiful. Mm. So, well, uh, we are here wrapping up this wonderful conversation. I hope you learned something and enjoyed as much as I did. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here. My pleasure and thank you thank so much. You. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> if you need further information on what we discussed here, please send us a message and I'll get back to you. And once again, it's a pleasure being here. And thank you for watching and see you in the next episode. And if you're not done yet, please follow me. We are on YouTube, Spotify, and Instagram. Ciao. 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 Ciao.